Hey guys, this is Jim K from StairwayToVideo.com with another one of my video tips. Well, wait a minute, video tips? What are you talking about? You got a, you got a welding helmet in your hand. Oh, oh, it's not gonna be a video tip. I'm gonna show you how to use a 110 volt MIG welder. I've got a link in over there, 110 volt MIG welder, and be able to learn how to weld aluminum with no special attachments. Just a few secrets that an old timer told me about. Come on, let's get started. Okay, so here's the situation. Before I get interested in audio and video, I was a welder fabricator years before. So anyway, I learned a couple of quick techniques and tips on how to weld certain materials. One of them was aluminum. Now there's a, there's a little bit of a tip for welding aluminum. There's actually several different tips and I'm gonna get into that right now. So come on over to the welding table and we'll get started. And for videographers, just as a side note, don't leave because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you what cameras I used and what audio I used and what lighting I used to get this set up. Okay, so stick around. The equipment you're going to need is some sort of a 110 volt MIG welding machine. This just happens to be a, a Lincoln SP125. Um, I bought this quite a while ago. I'm not sure if they even make them anymore but uh, it has totally, totally variable heat settings rather than just detents. So in other words, if you look in there, you can see that uh, it's, the heat settings are totally variable. So is the wire speed. You're going to also need some sort of a shielding gas. You're going to need 100% uh, argon. So this is a 100% argon tank. Yep. All right, some of the other goodies you're going to need are you're going to need something to weld. So some sort of aluminum. You're going to need a wire brush to clean that aluminum before you weld and after you weld. You're going to need obviously the, the aluminum in this case. As you're going to see, um, we're going to use 5356 alloy. The most common one that guys use to MIG weld is 4043, but uh, I'll show you why we're going to use this instead. You're going to need something to clamp the metal together. So if you're using regular steel, something that's uh, ferrous, you're going to need magnets, uh, but today we're probably going to use something like this because aluminum isn't magnetic, so we're going to use some sort of vice grip clamps to hold the metal down as we weld it. And then to cut the metal, you're going to need something, some sort of a diagonal cutters. Uh, these are some, just some cheap diagonal cutters. I think I got them at Harbor Freight. And then last but not least, well, this is not really last, but you're going to need a MIG welding helmet. Now the great thing about this helmet here is um, this is a Primo automatic helmet. It's called a Jackson TrueSight, TrueSight 2. Um, it's got some automatic settings in it and it's really an incredible, incredible insert that goes into your Jackson helmet. Um, but I, I highly recommend it. Not only is it safe for your eyes, but it's incredibly fast. You can, uh, you can regulate how you want the shade, the sensitivity, or the delay. You can set it up so you can use, you can set it up so that you're just using a torch setting on it or a grind setting, or you go all the way over to weld and you can set what shade you want. So anyway, we'll be using that also. Anyway, so that's pretty much, oops, I forgot one thing. This is really important. So you're gonna want some sort of a dust mask. Weld welding fumes and the metal that go into the atmosphere are toxic. So you want some sort of um, a dust mask or a respirator to protect your lungs.
So let's get going. Okay, today I'm gonna to repair something that has been laying around my shop for a long time. In fact, my son, my son gave this to me a long time to repair. <clears throat> it's a set of stilts, or it's just a, it's one stilt out of two that somebody would use to, you know, hang drywall up on a ceiling somewhere. Anyway, if you take a close look at this, this leg here, or this pad is broken. So I'm not sure what happened, but anyway, it got broken. Probably something fell on it. So first things first, we're gonna take this apart and uh, get it ready to weld. tool for the right job. All right, there it is right there. That's what we've got to put together. Now we're gonna to have to prep this. See how the break is flat. We're gonna to wanna to bevel this edge all the way along it and this edge up here. So, I'm gonna take a file, just bevel it. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we got two pieces that are gonna come together with a nice bevel in the center. I don't know if you can see that. Should be able to weld that. We also got some, we also can put a couple of welds on each side here, there. Probably the inside and then the outside too. So probably ought to, probably ought to uh, file that a little bit. Okay, let's set, set everything up. Okay, now we're gonna get it ready 
to clamp, just so we can tack it. So we're going to clamp it together temporarily. Take our vice grips here. I'm going to clamp it right in the center. See how we've got a beveled edge in there? I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a beveled edge right there on the bottom. If I flip it over on the top here, there it is right there. That should give us enough penetration uh, with the aluminum MIG wire to get down in there and melt right in place. So let's tack it together. Now our first step, we're going to actually uh, talk about MIG welding wire. Both these spools are aluminum. One of them is 4043. That's probably the that's probably the most popular MIG welding wire for aluminum that that most guys use anyway. I'm not a metallurgist, but that's probably the most that uh, home hobbyists use, and uh, that's what they're going to try to sell you at the when you go to the welding store to buy equipment for welding aluminum. Uh, but the trick the old timer told me is go with 5356. It's a little bit stiffer alloy, so in other words, it'll go through the gun better. Where this 4043 has a tendency, since it's softer, has a tendency to, to bunch up and then get jammed and then bird feed Oops. inside your machine, and then it's a big mess, and it won't even go through the gun or the nozzle, or the tip, I should say. Whereas 5053 is just Oops. a little bit stiffer. So it's got some of the properties of, of metal as far as stiffness. So it goes through the gun better, goes through the, uh, it goes through the gun and the tip better, and uh, it allows you to weld aluminum uh, with your MIG machine. Okay, the next tip or secret is going to be, all right, we're using 30 thousandths diameter wire. So normally, you'd use this bottom tip right here. Let's get it in focus. This bottom tip right here, which says it's 30 thousandths. But we're not going to do that. The secret is you want to go with the next size up tip. The next size up is 035. And the reason you do that is because aluminum has a tendency to expand very quickly compared to steel when it's when you're welding. So the 035 gives you that little bit of gap so when the aluminum does expand it won't jam on the tip. And that's one of the major problems with MIG welding aluminum wire is the fact that it expands and it, it gets jammed or sticks inside the tip. So we're going to go 035 tip. Another quick pointer to get, in the, to get the aluminum MIG wire to come through your gun is <clears throat> While you're feeding the wire, um, be sure that you pull the tip off, you know, before you turn the machine on, obviously, but be sure you take the tip off. The contact tip on some MIG welders stays electrically hot, even if the trigger isn't pressed. So, to stay safe, turn the machine off, then unplug the machine when changing or replacing contact tips. Okay. Then, let the wire feed out. So I'm going to turn the machine back on. So now let the wire feed out. There it comes. So there's the aluminum wire. Otherwise, if you don't do that, sometimes the wire, the, MIG, the aluminum wire will get jammed inside here, won't go through the hole in the tip, and you'll end up getting a jam in here. You have to take the tip off anyway and maybe even pull this section of aluminum out of there and cut it out. So then shut the machine off. Unplug the machine. Oops. Oops. Now feed the tip through the aluminum. Screw it on. Tighten it in place. All right. Now you're ready to put your, your now you're ready to put your gas nozzle on. Okay. Now we're ready to set the machine up. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to change out the argon CO2 mixed gas, which is for mild steel, and change it out with the art straight argon. So let's do that right now. Put the safety cap on when you store tanks.
Okay. Okay, so when you're all set up, your setup should look something like this. So we've got the 100% argon gas to the right. You've got your O30 5356 aluminum MIG wire. And then on the left side, you've got um, the drive rolls with the wire going through it. That's what gives you your tension. That's what shoots the wire out the gun. And then to the left of that, up a tiny bit, is how you set up your polarity. So when you're when you're wiring or I'm, when you're welding with MIG, you want to have it at DC plus. So if you look, I'm not sure if I can zoom in here, but let's try it. So right there, the way you've got these set up, you've got it set up for what they would call DC plus. I'm I'm not sure if you can see it, but let's see if I can lighten that up any any at all. If you look on the chart up here, it shows you that the output polarity for, for MIG is DC+. Plus. If you were welding with uh, gasless flux cord wired, you want to have it wired the opposite direction. But for way, the way we're doing it, we're having a DC plus for MIG. Okay, first and foremost, you want to make sure you've got protective equipment on. I always use a, either a dust mask or a respirator. You've got to make sure you obviously have a welding helmet and gloves. And uh, also, the other trick to this whole thing is, of course, say this gun has a 10-foot lead on it. You want to make sure that there are no kinks and it's, oops, and it's laying smoothly on the ground in like an S pattern. Not a real tight S pattern, but a nice S pattern. And the other thing about aluminum wire is, because it burns so hot, you've got to have, make sure your machine is on one of the highest, it's on the highest wire speed uh, that your machine can do. That's, You'll be able to adjust it as you get going, but normally this wire has got to come flying out of there in order for it to weld smoothly and to do what we're trying to do here, okay? Okay, let's turn the machine on and we'll, we'll tack our piece. Well, after our tack weld, our first tack weld, <clears throat> it's tacked, but it's a little bit bubbly. So anyway, I just cleaned it off. I turned the heat up a little bit higher, and uh, we'll see what happens when I go to weld it. Now it looks kind of lumpy, but I'll tell you something. Once we grind that off and get it level, it'll be a pretty good weld, I think. So now we'll do the back pieces and then uh, I'll show you how everything looks after I've ground it off. So that's not too bad. This weld isn't the greatest. I'm gonna have to grind it and do it again, but these all turned out good. And I guess the secret was I had the heat up too high. So I'm gonna just, these are on the bottom. They don't matter. So I'm gonna leave those without grinding them off. I'll just clean them up. The top one I, the top one I head sanded it flat, ground it flat, but now it's, uh, the weld from the bottom has bubbled through. So I'll grind it again. So again, here's the finished product. There's the top half. 
There's the sides, a little porosity there, but no big deal. Here's some strengthening welds on the bottom. And then here's the other side. A little porosity on the top, right where the edge of the welds kind of meet the base material. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with my project. You know, I did have a little porosity here, here and there, but uh, toward the middle of it, like I was saying before, I did turn the heat down and I had better, I had a better weld bead, so that worked good. Um, but some of the secrets again, use 5356 aluminum MIG wire. It's stiffer, it goes through the gun better, less kinking, lead, less bird caging. Bird caging is when the drive rolls inside the MIG welder uh, spin and nothing happens and all of a sudden it takes all the wire and shoots it all inside the body of the MIG welder and doesn't go through the gun. 43, 4043 has a tendency to do that um, more so than 5356, but it did happen to me a couple of times while I was welding, so that's another thing to watch out for. But And another thing is keeping keeping the gun straight. So in other words, try not to bend it real tight, make a slow S curve in the gun itself. Again, gun is about eight feet long on my machine, so just make sure it's fairly uh, straight and that the curves are more like an S than they are kinked. The other thing is, uh, again, use a contact tip one size larger than your wire diameter. So if you have 030, 030 inch, uh, 30 thousandths inch uh, diameter wire, use an 035 inch diameter tip. I used 100% argon gas. You can't really MIG weld aluminum with 7525. That's 75% argon, 25% CO2. That's a standard uh, MIG welding gas you use. So 100% argon for aluminum wire. The other thing is you're, you've got you've to weld fast. In other words, the wire has got to come out of that gun fast. So in my case, I turned the wire speed up all the way as far as my dial would go. And that's how I ended up uh, getting a fairly good weld out of it. My takeaways from this whole thing would probably be, um, if I was to do it again, I probably would preheat the metal before I welded it. So a lot of guys will take a propane torch, they'll heat this metal up a little bit before they start welding, because aluminum, the heat dissipates very fast from aluminum, and that's what can cause, I've got like a little checking crack around the backside of this weld here, which this won't matter too much, but that, that can happen too. So. And again, I've got some porosity, but that's mostly from when I did my original weld, which was way too hot. The other subsequent welds, like this one, doesn't have very much porosity in it at all. So anyway, I think it turned out pretty good. Again, I'm not a metallurgist, but uh, you know, you can also you can read up on this stuff if you really want to find out more about it and what the right kind of welding wire would be. And uh, but this just happens to work well for me. And this is some tips that I got from an old timer. So anyway, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to, and again, have a great day, and thanks for watching my video. All put back together. All he needs now is to get a pad to match this one. You should be all set. Let's take a look at what audio and video equipment I use to make this video. My main camera is the iPhone 6S. Uh, I, I shot it in 1080p, 30 frames a second. So that's what I use for the main camera. And then up above here, I use the RODELINK wireless lavalier system. So I've got, this is the receiver I'm talking into right now. I'm talking into the right transmitter. Here. This is the receiver. And that goes down and plugs into the iPhone with the special adapter. The adapter is right here. There it is. Okay, and then I used a, a tr it's just sitting on a tripod. It's about five feet up in the air. I'm not sure if I can get this whole thing in, but anyway, there's the, so there's the tripod. And then I used actually four lights. So I used two simple clamp-on reflector lights that I got at Home Depot. And in them, I've got some daylight balanced LED flood bulbs. So there's the two, two main lights that I used. And all I've got is just some diffuser material over the front of them. So it's just like some packing, white packing material. It's not bubble wrap, but it's like a, it's kind of like bubble wrap. And there's my setup with the uh, main camera. In fact, it's 
it's on right now and recording. Okay, and then over here, I've got this floodlight. And what this floodlight's doing is it giving a, it's giving me a splash over on this side wall here. So I basically am standing in front of the, I'm standing in front of the uh, MIG welder. In fact, I've got two orange lines here where my feet go, right there. And all this guy is doing is it's uh, just putting a nice splash of light sort of on the wall that's behind me. And then uh, down in front of the MIG welder, I've got another clamp on light that I just have a, uh, I just have an in indoor, it's a uh, soft white balanced floodlight. So just give me a little bit of light on the MIG welder itself. I'm using this three axis gimbal to be able to do this fairly decent, you know, fairly decent video I'm doing right here. So it's nice and stable. And then in my hand here, I've got an iPhone 6. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it, what I'm, what I'm using. Um, I can talk about the adapter in a little bit, but this adapter, come on around the back here. So all this adapter is right here, it's a TRRS male to twin TRS female adapter. It allows you to plug in a stereo connection that you get out of one of these road, uh, these road link wireless setups and then it goes into the iPhone, which is TRRS. And that's the only way you can get audio into the iPhone if you want to do it wirelessly the way I'm doing it. Even though I didn't use it this time, normally my go-to setup for recording something like the close-ups of me welding would be this Joby Gorilla Pod with a Joby ball head mount attached to this eye stabilizer mount, which the iPhone 6 is mounted into. And it makes for a great setup when doing close-up work. So pretty simple setup. I thought you videographers would be interested in that. And uh, for the rest of you guys that uh, love MIG welding, I hope you enjoyed these tips.